Good morning. This video is going to be about tree frogs. Sort of. Not really. It's going to be about painting a tree frog. I don't know why I've never painted a tree frog before because um, they are really cool little creatures. They're very colorful. So I was perusing Unsplash and I found this adorable picture of a tree frog and decided that I wanted to take a break from the huge commission that I'm doing right now, which is on a 36 by 36 inch canvas and I need to let layers dry and everything and I need to get my brain away from that painting. So I was like, oh, you know what? I have that little tester canvas that I did with acrylic inks um, to test different colors out and I could put like a little tree frog in here and make create this illusion of a slit in the canvas and the tree frog kind of poking out of it and I thought that would be really neat. Um, acrylic inks are awesome to use for, for backgrounds because you get almost this acrylic pour vibe with them, but um, they're highly, highly pigmented. They have really bright colors. And I'll show you an example of another painting that I did that had an acrylic ink background and then I embellished it with oil paint to create this painting. I didn't film this, but I do have the before acrylic um, ink picture and then I was like seeing the shape of a face and kind of went with that to create that painting. So I'm going to show you how I did the acrylic ink background for this and then I'm going to get my graphite pencil out and we're going to sketch in a little frock. And because it's, I need something cute today. Something, something a little cute. Okay, so I am starting off by toning my canvas with a pastel pink fluid acrylic. I do that when I'm not going to cover every part of the canvas with ink, so there's no actual white canvas showing through at the end. If you're wondering why I have that tin of Karin Dosh watercolor crayons right there, it's because I don't even have level floors in my house, so I have to level out the canvas by putting something underneath it. I don't know, it's like a New England thing. We can't have floors that are level. Ah... <sighs> Anyway, so moving on, that is what rubbing alcohol does. And it creates this really cool modeled appearance on there. And when your acrylic inks are drying and you spray it right before they're dry, you get even more of those little kind of pockets of, they almost look like bubbles. They're really neat. So you can use this almost like you would if you were doing an acrylic pour, although it wouldn't be as much paint or anything like that, but it's more of a free flowing, fun way of putting paint on a canvas. And you can get all these really cool drips, really cool color variations, and you can let layers dry a little bit and then put more layers on top. And that's kind of what I'm doing here is that some of those base layers are almost dry and I'm just putting some layers on top of the other wet layers. And you can use a blow dryer to push some of the excess paint off of the canvas. Okay, so before we go on to the sketch, I just wanna clarify something. I said I was perusing Unsplash and expecting that you would know exactly what that meant. And maybe you do, and maybe some of you don't. So to clarify that statement, unsplash.com is a website that you can go to and find royalty-free photos that you can use for references and they have everything under the sun. There's also another website called Pexels, P-E-X-E-L-S.com, and that's another place that you can find royalty fro Frodo's, because Lord of the Rings, Frodo's, no, photos, um, that you could use as references as well. So I just wanted to clarify that because I feel like sometimes I talk and I expect everyone to know what I'm talking about. Okay, so let's get onto the sketch and um, we can talk more about that later, or not. Okay, so in order to sketch this out, I'm just gonna be using a regular graphite mechanical pencil because they have these little tiny, tiny tips and you can get a lot of the small details and especially with something this small. Okay, so let's talk about the sketching part of a painting. In my opinion, that is the foundation for your subject, and it needs to be absolutely accurate. So what happens if you don't have an accurate drawing? Then you don't have an accurate painting. So I will sometimes spend hours on the sketch itself, making sure it's absolutely correct and everything is where it needs to be, the scale is properly aligned, the eyeballs are the same size, whatever it is. 
because in the end of it, I don't want to have to fix a painting. And it's a lot easier to fix an oil painting as you're painting it because you can just take some thinner and you can remove some paint. But acrylic dries so fast, you can't exactly erase acrylic paint. And that's what I'm going to be working with today. So I want my sketch to be absolutely spot on accurate. So I spent a lot of time doing this little sketch, even though, I mean, yeah, I probably spent 45 minutes doing the sketch, but I spent 45 minutes doing this sketch because I wanted the painting to look the way that I want it to. And drawing is difficult for some people. Some people have a really hard time drawing. I've been doing it all my life, so drawing is something that it, uh, I'm actually pretty good at. I started playing with charcoal when I was about 10 years old, and I did my first charcoal portrait of my grandfather when I was 11. So I've been playing with charcoal for a long time. I was doing portraits when I was in my teens, into my 20s. I just loved working with charcoal and I loved drawing. I fell in love with drawing when I was a very small child and just continued doing it throughout my life. So when you do something all the time, you end up being pretty good at it. Okay, so unlike oil paint, acrylics don't blend easily, and that's why I will usually do an acrylic underpainting and then refine with oils. For me, oil painting takes less time to paint, but longer to dry, and acrylics are far more labor intensive because you have to work one section at a time because they dry so fast. There are pros and cons to both. So I'm starting with the little bulbous red eyes of my little tree frog here, and I have to work one little section and kind of like be able to blend a little bit into each section. So it does take a lot longer to work with acrylics and try and make them look like oil paints. They don't have the same properties as oil paint. So it's far more challenging for me to paint this way, although it does end up having a really cool effect if you can do it. You know, I think the trick to getting acrylics to look like oils is to work with thin layers of paint. So if you switch between glazing with transparents, then adding opaques, then glazing with transparents again over the opaques, you can get this like depth and dimension that you wouldn't get if you were just slopping big thick layers of acrylic paint onto your canvas. So to get it to look like oil paint, I mean, it can be done. And I've seen some amazing acrylic paintings that I thought were oil paintings and was surprised when I found out they were acrylic paintings. The other thing to get it to look more like oil paint is because acrylic paint tends to dry pretty flat, um, I suggest using two to three layers of a gloss varnish. Uh, I use one by Liquitex on my Strictly Acrylic paintings and it brings the color saturation back as well as the depth and dimension that I worked so hard to achieve. So on this little frog here, I'm actually using four different color greens, mixing them in different ways in order to get all of the different shades of green on him. So I'm using a phthalo green, I'm using a bright yellow green, I'm using a chromium green, and I'm also using green gold to amp up some of the warmth. I'm also not using a lot of black in this painting. The only place that I have black are the little slits of his pupils and his eyes. The rest of the shadow colors, I'm using a burnt umber that's mixed with some of the phthalo green and for some of the lighter shadows, I'm mixing it with the chromium green. Underneath the chin, I'm using a mixture of burnt umber and raw sienna to get that kind of almost yellow brown color. For his eyes, I first used a layer of this orange red or red orange, and then that went on like a transparent. And so then I added a little bit of red oxide mixed with a deeper red that I had. And I can't remember what the color is right at the moment, but I will put it in the description. As the parts I've already painted dry, you'll see that I continually add more layers to them to add more realistic color gradients. He's already starting to look like a tree frog, which is the ultimate goal here. Getting all the light and shadows in the right places is, is really important. That's why I think it's, um, it's a good idea to keep looking at your reference photo. You always wanna look at your reference photo and see where the darks and the lights are 
you can't memorize a tree frog if you're not around them all the time. So I have to constantly be looking at the reference photo and seeing where the color gradients are, where the lightest lights are, where the mid-tones are, and everything. And you really do have to pay attention to your reference photo. You don't have to follow everything exactly. Obviously, I'm putting it onto an acrylic ink background that is kind of funky, and I don't have him like peering over a leaf like in the source photo there. But that's what's going to make the piece of art more unique is because you're putting your own spin on it. So just copying a photo as it is, is fine if you're practicing and everything like that. But to actually make something more of your own, you do have to put a little bit of yourself into it. And that is what you want to do when you use any kind of reference photo is you want to put your own spin on it. You want to either have something abstract or even change the background entirely change the subject matter i don't i don't care if you wanted to put a gold chain around his neck what, whatever you want to do but you kind of want to have your own little message in there and what i'm doing with this is that i just think that having like that little tear in the canvas and having this little tree hog tree hog oh my god tree frog peeking out of it it's just like a really cool little painting so that's what I'm doing with it and I think it's a pretty cool little concept and um, yeah so you do you do want to want to make things into your your own somewhat now if you're doing a painting and you wanted to make it an impressionistic painting because that's your style then absolutely do that if you want to follow the photo exactly okay sure do that if that's what you really want to do. If you're doing a portrait for someone because you've been commissioned to do so and it has to look exactly like that photo, which I personally hate doing um, because I always want to put my own spin on things, but I've had to do those in the past and I have to constantly be staring at that photo and almost like I am, I know that person's face better than they know their face. At the, at the time that I've ended the painting, it's crazy. I'm like, well, I know every single freckle. I know exactly how asymmetrical their face is. They have a little dimple on the right side of their face. I mean, I, I have done portraits that were so intense and I've had to like stare and stare and stare and stare and each wrinkle, each you know, laugh line, everything had to be observed and it had to look exactly like the photo. And this is why I don't normally take commissions on like that these days. I don't like to paint exactly from a photograph that somebody gives me because I kind of got labeled as being a portrait artist for a long time and I got really really burnt out doing that because it was like I couldn't use any of my own ideas. I was just being thrown other people's photos and they their family members and it was just oh you know I'm I, I don't have any artistic impression here I'm just painting a photo for you and um so I stopped taking on commissions like that because I just I was getting burnt out and I prefer to get commissions that are like oh I have a concept in my head and I'd like you to paint it and or I come up with a concept and someone's like wow can you make a painting out of that and I'll buy it from you. I, I prefer those kind of commissions. I, I don't really like having people dictate to me what they want me to paint. And I know that's that's kind of a crappy way to be to a certain degree where it's like, oh, well, if someone wants to pay you money in order to do that, yeah, well, it can't be all you do because then you lose something of yourself in the process. So yeah, that was very long-winded, I'm sorry. But will you look at that? We are finally on the last leg of this painting. Literally. It's kind of funny because on this last leg, his his last leg, this is the only part of the painting that has any purple and or, and or blue in it. And if you look at the reference photo, you'll see that there's this almost purpley color in the shading and then there's this little splash of like teal. So when I start doing that part of it, that like I had to squeeze out paint just to do this little part of his leg. Um, 
with a little purple that was a, it's actually a light purple that I mixed with a little bit of black to get this purpley gray color, um, almost like a purple charcoal color. And yeah, you see it right there. And so this is like the shadow of this leg is this purple color. Um, and it's actually kind of really cool that there's this little splash of purple and this little tiny splash of blue right there. And you wouldn't really notice it at the end of the painting. Like I don't notice it when I look at it, but I know it's there, which is really kind of neat. So now that the frog is pretty much donezo here, um, I'm going to be working on the shadow for the slit in the canvas and just kind of getting a, a little bit of that brighter color along the seam of it that's on the outside of it to kind of bring it forward a little bit and then I'm going to be darkening the shadow behind it so this this point I'm just glazing I'm glazing with this orange color and then I'm going to be glazing with some other acrylics I'm going to be using a glazing medium by Liquitex in order to do all of the glazing and kind of get this darkened color and also put the shadow underneath all of the little toes and everything and get this to look a little bit more interesting and a little more vibrant And we have a beautiful tree frog. He is adorable and I shall name him Leonard. Yep, Lenny. So this was so much fun. I can't even tell you how much fun this is after just working probably for 18 hours on the commission piece, which is extremely cumbersome because it's massive. And there's so many little details to it and um, I had to have a break from it, I really did. And hopefully I'll have that video up early next week. Um, but I needed to do something like this to cheer me up, something that had bright colors and I immediately want to put him on my bedroom wall next to my bed so I can wake up and say, hi Leonard, you are so adorable in the morning. Um, but this really was pretty easy. It took about two hours from start to finish, from sketch to finish, and it's all acrylic paint. So you can get very realistic effects from acrylic paint if you take the time, which I'm usually pretty lazy because I'm usually working on a very large canvas when I'm working with acrylic paint. So that's why I usually finish paintings with oil paint because I have more work time. Um, and I can put in those details and I can really take the time and glaze colors in. But I did get some golden open acrylics and I am curious to work with those. So I will probably take yet another break from this giant commission piece and I'm gonna play with some golden open acrylics. So stay tuned, I'm gonna play with those, see how they work, see if they actually work with like oils and they have the blendability of oils. And yeah, I think that'll be kind of a cool thing to try and it might not work at all. I don't know. Some people swear by them and some people, they're not so fond of them. So we will see what happens. In the meantime, I will list all of the colors that I use for this little tree frog in the description. And like I said earlier in the video, check out unsplash.com and pexels.com if you are looking for royalty free photos that you can use for reference photos or things like a tree frog because I don't have tree frogs in my area. Um, I, I live with a photographer and he can take all the pictures of birds that are around here and everything for me, but tree frogs, no, we don't have any, unfortunately. So I have to source things out. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please hit the like button. Please subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. And I love you all, and I will see you next time. Bye.